College Basketball, celebrating our 25th season. Welcome, everybody, to Philadelphia Atlantic 10 action this afternoon. A couple of teams that are surging towards the postseason tournament next week in Dayton. The Xavier Musketeers taking on the Temple Owls. Dave Sims and Bob Wenzel with you. And this is a big game for the Musketeers. They want to shape up and get ready for the NCAA tournament. Our star watch a couple of good ones. No doubt about that. Romaine Sato, a very versatile performer. And David Hawkins, the third leading scorer in the nation, had 41 against UMass in his last game. Sato will have the defensive assignment on Hawkins. As you can see both teams in where they want to be heading towards the postseason tournament. Eight of their last nine. Xavier coming in off a win against George Washington, 83-66. Temple, double overtime against UMass here in this building, 98-92. And it'll be Antoine Robinson and Miles jumping it up, and we'll do it again. The referees, Frank Conley, will get a chance to toss it up again. He's working with David Elliott and Murph Shapiro. Antoine tried to steal the ball on the way up. That is illegal. Here's Sato. He's going to get things going for the Xavier Musketeers. Well, the famed matchup zone will be very much in evidence tonight for Temple. They want to force the outside shots. However, Xavier, a very good perimeter shooting team. Dolman opens up the scoring with a triple. Bob, that's, I think on every game we've seen Xavier this year, I think Dolman has knocked down a long three, either from the corner or from that spot. And he usually takes the first shot of the first half and the first shot of the second half. A freshman, pretty athletic also. Very impressive. Here's Tyree Payard. Standard operating procedure for the Owls. Mr. Hawkins with the ball. Sato on him. Well, there's the matchup you want. There's a, some slippage. It was a bump by Sato as Hawkins went to the basket. Couldn't be hotter right now. Starting lineup, it'll be Cage, Dolman, Miles, Chalmers, and Sato. Cage starting his 10th straight game, the freshman. Antoine Robinson, Butler, Fired Collins and Hawkins. Butler had 17 boards in that double overtime win against UMass earlier in the week. Dave, problem right away. First possession, Sato gets an immediate foul. He's their most versatile defender. And there's David Hawkins knocking it down. 24 points a game. He is a 30% shooter from long range. And Sato's got to mentally stay in the game against Hawkins because he's going to take just about all the shots. He's 40% accountable for all the scoring for the Owls. That leads the nation. It's risky business, Dave, to have one of your best offensive players guard a scorer like Hawkins. He could get in foul trouble. That could spell doom for the Musketeers in a game like this. And this is a must game for them. Make no mistake about it. 18 and 10, they've got to get this win. They are firmly planted on the bubble. A couple of big losses to Duquesne. A couple of marks on their schedule. Here's Hawkins. Waits for a help, Fired. a three, and Butler gets a rebound. He's coming up that career high, 17 boards. Go foul! Fired. Got it up and in. Fired going hard to his left. Over five the last three. five games, Dave, Fired's averaged 10, almost 11 points a game in those games. That rounds out their offense, makes them a better team. One of the reasons they're eight and one in their last nine games. What a surprise, the John Cheney team surging in February <laughs> in his tenure. Playing 751 ball, 148 wins and 49 losses. The last three years, 23 and three. Doman, hot hand continues. And Xavier back on top, six to five. Well, Dolman has both of their threes so far. You can bet that they're going to make an adjustment and make him a little bit more of the focus of their defense. Should. He's 42% from long range. Got a switch here. Cage on market. Yes, very important switch from what I said just before. You don't want Sato in foul trouble. Hawkins feeling it. Three points for him. 8-6 Temple. <laughs> what a pull-up jump shot. You think you get confident when you score 41 in a double overtime victory? I think so. His career high and got him, Dave, over 2,000 points for his career here. Joins Mark Macon and Lynn Greer, the only Temple performers to go for 2,000 plus. Talking great company. Cage, the freshman. Look, set shot for three. Old school style. Nine to eight. Well, when you play Temple, you must think three-point shot. They force you to take those threes. You have to take them and be confident taking them. Xavier's starting out well. Keith Butler tip, no good rebound, Miles. 
Chalmers in a hurry for Xavier Ball Club that averages just under 70 a game, fourth in the conference. Miles up top, the power forward offering. Butler comes down with another board. Temple's signature win, we were talking about this before the game, Bob, against South Carolina. About the only win that really jumps out of there off of their result page. A 71-61 win here in Philly back in December 15th. Amen. That was a very good win. South Carolina's got 21 wins. Saw them a couple of weeks ago. Nice. That's a good ball club, Dave Odom has. Rebound to Sato. I saw them lose at South Carolina. They're big people. Beat the daylights out of Florida in the first half, but then the guards for Florida took over in the second half and came away with a, big, a hard fought victory in the SEC. The only problem is Orlando Howell is now out for the season. That hurts. Rebound by Butler. See how free and easy Xavier is shooting the ball from the perimeter, and that's how you have to be against Temple. Last year, Chalmers, did, in the two games that these two teams played, they split. Chalmers took nothing but threes. Robinson. Everybody's three crazy today. Cage comes down with the loose ball. Last time these clubs met the semifinals of the A-10 tournament last year, March 14th. It was a beauty, too. 63-57. Owls won it. Owls making a run to the final. And they lost to host Deaton. Well, that was a good job by Sato on the offensive boards. And Dolman, somebody needs to call the fire department on this kid. He is hot. And credit Sato with getting the offensive rebound and keeping that possession alive for his team. Well, that shot had so much height on it. I'm sure they're reporting it down at the uh, Philly Airport radar screen. <laughs> Fired. Oh, no good. Rebound, Miles. Pace in favor of Xavier. Sato, a good three-point shooter, in and out. Loose ball. Cage has got it, lost it. Kick it back. Dolman sets up Sato again. Nice play. He was. Oh, what a beautiful play by Dolman. 6-9. He makes three threes, then dribble penetrates and finds the All-American. What a great play by Justin Dolman. Five for nine shooting are the Xavier Musketeers right now. Five of eight from three. Oh, man. They made 14 of 26 when they beat Temple by 30 last year. Marty Collins coming up a big game against UMass. 30 points. 15th straight double-figure game. Here's Collins. Five on the shot clock, and he hits it. Marty Collins out of Philadelphia, Simon Gratz High School, 29% shooter from three-point range. You mentioned he had 30 against UMass in the double overtime victory, thrilling victory for Temple. That also his career high, Dave. Did. What a good number shot, 10 for 19. Our first time out here in Philadelphia, 13.46 to go, Xavier by four. Here in Philadelphia, the scoring opened up by the freshman Doman, and he's got a hot hand this afternoon. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball brought to you by Radio Shack. You've got questions, we've got answers. Yeah, come on over to Philly from Camden across the Ben Franklin Bridge. Atlantic 10 action this afternoon, four-point lead for the Xavier Musketeers along with Bob Wenzel. I'm Dave Sims. Glad you could join us. Give us an idea of how these teams how they stack up as we go into the tournament, given that St. Joe's is the team in the A-10. St. Joe's is going to be in the finals, I guarantee you that. These two teams, both of them can win it. The tournament is at Dayton, pretty close to Xavier. They played well in the tournament last year, so both of these teams have a good shot once the Atlantic 10 tournament begins. It's going to be a lot of fun next week, and Dayton will be there for it for the championship next Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern time, and here's your shot selection just like you talked about earlier it's all about the threes against the outs no doubt about that xavier frequent and accurate so far in this game you have to go in with a clear mind about shooting threes and not try to force the ball inside to temple butler is a very good shot blocker at 7-1 inside Xavier, second in three-point percentage to the aforementioned St. Joseph's Hawks. Xavier hitting at a clip of 37.2%. Chalmers going baseline. They swing around, Diedrich Finn has to beat the shot clock. Chalmers with a rebound. Uh, what a great head up by Chalmers, huh? Knew not to put the ball up. Discretion, the pettit part of Valor there. Get it up top to Cage. Chalmers will fire over the top. And... 
What do we got? A foul off of the ball. And tonight, ESPN celebration of one of college basketball's greatest rivalries continues from Camden, Cameron indoor stadium 8 eastern college game night presented by wachovia securities it's gonna be live from shashevskyville then at 9 eastern mike patrick dick vital they have the call as jj reddick and the blue devils take on rashad the kids roy williams and the carolina tar heel not a bad rivalry you're a part of that for some years as an assistant to bill foster with hawkins trying to knock one down give us a feel for how intense that is as Blackshear knocks down the putback. Let me put it this way, it doesn't get more intense, not only for the players, but the fans and the people who live in that state, and now a national audience, of course. Those two story programs. Always a treat. Duke won the first game on a Duhon late. late. Nice block by Butler. Bowman runs it down. Get plenty of time in the shot clock. Goes cross court. Chalmers beats the defense. Sets up Miles, and he gets a layup. Nifty move by Chalmers on the penetration. It is infrequent that a little guard can get inside and make plays against Temple Zone. They do a very good job of not allowing that kind of play. Xavier staying man-to-man. -man. Cage is on Hawkins to prevent Sato from getting fouls. Right now, Diedrich Finn in. He is the super sub as a guard and a good shooter. Hawkins working on Cage. Butler with a rare shot. Baseline rebound. Miles not free. Temple comes up with it. Blackshear was there. Get it back outside. How tough is it playing a team that basically is Collins and Hawkins that do the majority of the, of the shooting and scoring? Very difficult because you have to play individual defense. Not a lot of help available. And Temple shoots right here. four from the field, but they don't turn it over much, and that's why they're solid. We're going to break with Xavier leading by four. And Xavier raining threes on the Temple Owls here in Atlantic 10 action from Philadelphia, 11.32 to go first half. Dave Sims and Bob Wenzel and crew with you as we check out the Xavier tournament resume. Well, 18 and 10 right now. I think they got to win this game. That would very well do a get them near where they want to be. The key wins, look at that part. They beat Cincinnati. They beat Alabama of the SEC, which is a team that might be in. The problem is they've lost to Duquesne twice. That is a not a good situation for them. Four and four against teams in the top group. Very, very solid resume, but they've got to get a lot done. Also, they are hot at the end of the year. Coming in when I'm winning eight of nine as Hawkins with another three. David, for the afternoon, has got nine points. And talk about resumes. Gary Walters, who is one of the ten members of the selection committee, is here witnessing this game in his capacity as a member of that committee. Gary, the sure uh, he's looking at Xavier carefully. The athletic director, as you said, at Princeton. At Princeton, Bill Bradley's running uh, running mate in the backcourt in their <laughs> playing days. Back in 63-4-5 during that time. There he is. Gary. There is Gary. He's been on the committee. This is his second year on that prestigious committee. Very good player, as you mentioned, at Princeton. When you said running mate, I thought you meant like vice president. <laughs> I knew it gets your attention. <laughs> that shot turned away. That was Brandon Cole trying to get inside. That foul was on Nehemiah Ingram, his first. Marty Collins loses it out of bounds. A rare turnover by the Owls. Credit that to Sato. Sato is 6'5", and he has long, long arms. There's the Hall of Famer, John Cheney. 6.86 is win percentage. Dad Mata, very successful in his third season. Here with the Xavier Musketeers. And of course, had a great season at Butler previous to coming here. Collins coming way out the challenge. Here's Black Shoe Steel. Gets it done. We should also mention that was John Cheney's record at Temple. He has 700 wins total. Counting his days at Kennedy State. Excuse me. Southwest uh, of Philadelphia. 17-16. John. Basketball Hall of Famer class of 2001. Flair! Went in with Krzyzewski and Moses Malone. Same class. That young man trying to get his team to play at the top level as they can right now. Needing to win the Atlantic 10 tournament to get their bid to the NCAA. Playing well at this time of year, and that is the right time of year to be playing well. Finn, Cage, Sato, Cole, and Chalmers on the floor for Xavier. Notice the double team. They don't foul when they double team you. They use long arms. Hawkins 
Nice lead pass. Gets the finger roll. So Hawkins with 11. Well, he leads this team in steals with 72 now. You can tell the long arms of Temple's players used to their advantage. And that's six five guards. That's that's pretty incredible when you think he's you know he's a power guard basically. And Nehemiah Ingram coming in late trying to get a block. Got more body. The goal is going to be good. Second foul on Ingram. Well, the anticipation in the long arms of Hawkins get involved on this particular play. He just swipes it dead off Romain Sato and a controlled layup at the other end, which is what you want. Leads his team in steals, leads them in scoring, obviously. 6'5", 230 as a guard. It's a power guard if there ever was one. 53% <laughs> at the line, Cole misses. Can't convert the three-point play, Xavier by one. Temple had been on an 8-2 run. Very well played game so far. Not too many turnovers by either team. That is characteristic of Mismatch. Temple's play. Hawkins raises up. Can't get it. Kept alive. Good job by Salisbury. Boy, he had a mass mismatch on him. He had Chalmers on him. Salisbury thought about it. Ingram wants it in the post. And they'll reset. Under nine to play here in the first half. Temple has no small guard, so there is always a mismatch. When you got a Salisbury for three. Dustin Salisbury out of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Shooting 27% from long range. Seven points a game. One nineteen, full slate of NBA action comes your way tomorrow on ABC and ESPN. First beginning at 12.30 p.m. Eastern on ABC Sports. Dirk Nowitzki and the Mavericks travel to Houston to take on Yao Ming and the Rockets. And then it's an East-West showdown. Jason Kidd and the Nets face Shaq and the Lakers tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. ESPN offers more NBA action. The Celtics and the Timberwolves. And we got another foul on the Temple Owls, and that's going to go on Salzburg. That's going to be his first. Team foul number five. They get it out to Sato. 22-21, Xavier. Got a foul right here. They got Ingram. That'll be his third. Boy, he only averages 15 minutes a game. He's been in for about three or four. And he's picked up three fouls. Extremely aggressive play right here by Ingram. Not wanting Miles to get the ball. Miles does a good job of holding him off. Ingram hooked him. And as a result, he gets the foul. A lot of post jostling going on inside. John Chang and Fran Connolly in here. Pull. Easy shot. Sato gave him room and he put it down. 36% from long range, having an outstanding year. 11th in scoring in the conference. Came in as an All-American candidate. Has not disappointed. He's got six points, couple threes to his credit. 22-19, nice job, Finn. Beats Salzburg. Finn taking all the way in, bump, score. What a great play by Finn. He's an experienced player who was demoted to a guy coming off the bench, used to be a starter. And he keeps his body between the defense and the ball. First, great anticipation jumping in the lane. And watch how he keeps his body between the ball and the defender. Uses the glass. That is an educated play by Diedrich Finn. Sophomore guard out of Newburgh, Indiana. Last year, when Chalmers was hurt, he was called upon and did a very good job leading this ball club from the point. Early stages of the season. Sorry, Dave. He is a point and a two, and so is Chalmers. They don't really have one guy who is a point guard in the game at all times. John Chang pleading its case to the officials. What is that hand here, Andy? Well, they're talking about the scoreboard. John thinks they should have one more point because they made a three. I think he feels the scorer did not put the right number of points on the board. In a situation like this, the officials want to have both head coaches talk to at the same time. I was always uncomfortable when the officials were talking to the head coach of the other team, but I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> you know, it's funny, just reading about the Carolina Dad, are we in Duke um, a rivalry, and they, in a long piece in a magazine this week, and they talked about one time how 
Mike Shishovsky was in an official's face and, right, and basically getting what he was, what he wanted done. And, and it's like a game against Kansas. And Roy Williams came down and got it. Come on, I'm not going right. to let you dominate <laughs> place. I mean, I, right, I know exactly baby. what you're talking about. That you got to make sure you're up to speed. And I'm sure we'll see a lot of that tonight. Well, they have adjusted it. It said 19 before, and now it's up to 21. If I was John, I'd keep complaining. Maybe we could get it to 24. <laughs> yeah, don't miss any tricks. Here's Finn looking to complete a three-point play. 66% free throw shooter. Xavier is the team of seventh in the conference. Butler brings down the board. Well, they effectively iced Finn. He had to wait three minutes before he <laughs> shot that free throw. And yeah, nobody had mine, huh? Shot under eight to play. Collins can't make the catch. Chalmers gets a break one. <laughs> Not bad for a six-foot senior guard. Not Lionel known Chalmers. for his elevation. Usually he is playing with his feet on the floor. I really love that kid. He has really, really been great. Chalmers comes in as uh, tied with Sato as the leading scorer for Xavier. 15-9 a game. Here's Chalmers on pocket. He's made a big step this year. Made a play at the end of their Dayton victory to seal that one with a great one-on-one -on -one move. 8-3 run by the Musketeers, leading by five. Hawkins fade away. Tough shot. He'll shoot a couple. And Chalmers picks up the foul. And for Chalmers, his first. Team six. You're going to see Thad Mata put a lot of different guys on Hawkins tonight. He does not want his two star players, Chalmers or Sato, getting in deep foul trouble try to, trying to guard the great scorer. Justin Cage has been on him, picked up a foul. Chalmers has been on him, picked up a foul. Sato has been on him and picked up a foul. But when you have guys who anticipate defensively, that's extremely important against Temple. Here's and a look here, at what Chalmers did. Here we have it. Started by Sato. Exactly. Sato made the play. Right here, the little guy goes up and gives it a little flush. Much more known for his three-point shooting than his dunks. Hawkins stepping to the line where he hits 76% of his free throws. Co-player of the week in the A-10 with St. Joseph's Delonte West. And you saw 41 points against UMass. And in the second overtime, he had 17 of their 19 points in that scary. victory. Scary, isn't it? He can take over games. There's no doubt about that. Back rim, and rebound goes to Miles in his five-point game. Finn wide open. He'll fire up the three. Good rebound by Miles. Had it knocked out of his hands, and Temple comes away with it. Hawkins sees the little guy. Goes on the attack. Sets up fire, unusual delivery, but who cares when they go down? Temple to within two, Tyreek Fired, a freshman from Franklin Learning Center here in Philadelphia. Fired with five. Notice how Hawkins turned his body to the defender. He's got a big body to turn on his defender, and that way he keeps people away from the ball. He does on the outside with Barkley and guys like Adrian Dantler used to do on the inside. Take your pick there. Miles tripped, and I think that forced the walk as much as anything. Six and a half to go, first half. Two points, Xavier lead. We're back to Philly in a moment. Thank you very much back here in Philadelphia. Glad you could join us for college basketball. Xavier and Temple action in the Atlantic 10. We're at the Aaliyah Chorus Center here in Philadelphia, along with Bob Wenzel and Dave Sims. Three's the story so far. Both teams with half a dozen. No doubt about that. They have been on fire from three-point range. That is great, great shooting by both teams. Oddly enough, Temple in zone. And Xavier in man-to-man. -man. Still, they both are shooting from the perimeter. That's a heck of a day for Temple, because Temple's last in Atlantic 10 three-point shooting. As you mentioned, Xavier's second to St. Joseph's. That was the first possession of change of defense by either team. Three-quarter court trap did not throw Temple off at all. Took some time off the clock, however. The key matchup right now is Cage on Hawkins. Nine, Butler finds Fired. He's got one three, make it two. Why come off? Butler is not a threat to score at all. Byard just hit a three on the last possession. 
Very silly play by Xavier to come off him. Eight points for Byer. Tuttle back on top. We've had nine lead changes in a tie already. This is an active zone right now by the Owls. They do not just sit back and play zone. They jump in the lanes, anticipate, pressure the basketball. Miles has had a very difficult time. Doman slipped to the goal. Got it up and in. Well done. Miles and Dolman combining on that play. That's 11 for Dolman in this game. Three threes in that basket. He has been very solid. Boy, it looked like Temple had him shut down. That's what John Cheney. John Cheney hates it. That's a personal affront. And the four and five men operate like that down low. Well, they choose to trap Miles, and that way Dolman was left open. Hawkins, and they're going to get a foul on Butler in a battle with Miles. Well, you talk about the steel leader for these Temple Owls, it is David Hawkins. The reason, he has great anticipation. He jumps in the passing lane when there is no passing lane, and then he's able to steal the ball away from the dribbler as well. His great anticipation reading the offense is why he leads this team in steals. Frequently, you see a guy like Hawkins, when somebody penetrates, they jump in to help out. He fakes like he's jumping in and anticipates the pass very, very solid player defensively with that play. He certainly belies his body type with that stat. I mean, he's way ahead of the next uh, contributor in terms of steals. I mean, Collins came in 48, but 30 plus uh, fewer than what uh, Hawkins had. 30 to 27 for Miles. He's got four points. Here's some pressure, and Cage with that lane able to disrupt Collins. Fired, gets it across. Quick trigger for Hawkins. Rebound, Sato. Oh, oh, what a rebound. He was above the rim and grabbed that one. Just in the conference and rebound. As a guard. Yeah, that's impressive. Coming up on four and a half to go first half. Chalmers to Dolan. Tipped out of bounds by Marty Collins. Xavier has tried pressing twice, not with the idea of forcing turnovers. Temple only averages nine a game. That is the number one team in the country, but trying to increase and change the tempo of their offense. It's been successful last two possessions. Hawkins, keep it honest out there. Sada, Trout, gets it back to Chalmers. Seven on the shot clock. Long way from the goal, five on the shot clock. He got the shot off, air ball, and taken out by Marty Collins. Sato, despite his great All-American status, is not a guy who can put the ball on the floor and create his own shot. After he runs off pick, if he's set, they get it to him, he's trouble. Marty Collins operating in the middle of the lane. Xavier by one, Collins has got five. Think of the two guards for Temple. Collins and Hawkins, they take almost all the shots. 6-5 and 6-6. Six, six. Here's your steal, Collins got it going. That's up. Fired's got a couple of threes. Hawkins. Cage shut him down. Nicely done there. Quadruple team. Collins likes his matchup. Got the hot touch. Temple back in front. They are playing better now than they have all season. And this is the right time and a, a very important time for them, obviously. Seven point by Collins. Gives Temple a one point lead. Coming up on three minutes ago, first half. Boy, active. How about uh, Hawkins? Well, following up on the point of Collins and Hawkins at 6'5 and 6'6 six, six guards, they are the front of the zone. Very difficult to get anything started against Temple when they are harassing you out there. They're doing a heck of a job. Tough shot. Boy, wide right by Cage. Here's Collins, under three to go. One point lead for the out. Xavier struggling the last two possessions. Temple's defense really increasing its intensity. Shooting numbers. One point lead. We've got 11 lead chances and a tie so far. Well played game. A lot of tired guys right now. Temple last in field goal shooting in the uh, A-10. You never know it today. Speaking of which, Antoine Robinson, a 21 for center. <laughs> wow, how about this? Three-point lead here for the Owls. This is senior days, and other than Hawkins, the rest of these guys are sophomores. Yeah, Robinson, couple threes. Remain trying to answer. No, keep it alive. Cage climbed the back of Byard, and Cage picks up the foul. That's his first. 2.10 to go. David Hawkins, a warm goodbye here. I'll tell you about that when we return to Philadelphia.
here in Philadelphia. Temple enjoying its largest lead. One of their alums here, Dwayne Coswell. Played some pretty good center here. Went on to a nice career in the NBA. And their all-time leading scorer, Mark Macon, on the bench as an assistant to John Cheney. Mark Macon got out of Temple having scored 2,609 points. And gave me a lot of headaches. And when you were at Rutgers, nice right? When I was at Rutgers for a while. We split with him some, but I'll tell you what, he was a lot like Hawkins. Hard to guard. And, and, you, and you better have about five or six guys at the standby. Dude, <laughs> dude, dude you're up. Out. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> My man, you're up. It's your turn. He just roasted four guys. You gotta be it. Here's Hawkins, deep three. My goodness. Get out of here. It's senior night. Hawkins with 14 points. Under a minute and a half to play. Finn into the defense. Sato hesitated. Got it blocked. What do we got? A foul on the play. I think you said it right. He hesitated when he didn't need to hesitate. Sato has great hops. He could have gone up strong. Got hit in the eye on that play. A great free throw shooter. Robinson's foul, his second. Romain, 82%. First foul, beg your pardon, on Robinson. Yeah, it, it's easy to say when you see a player like that, he hesitated. Yeah, you go up and get hammers. You know? <laughs> <laughs> go on, well, take that hit. <laughs> Don't forget, we've got a beauty tonight. College game night in Krzyzewskiville. It's going to be presented by Wachovia Securities Cameron, Cameron Indoor Stadium. Duke, Carolina. A beauty tonight, the second go-round. Duke won the first on a Duhon layup. It's amazing how he was able to get free of Sato knocks away. You think Mike Duhon got open. pizza for all of those guys? Why not? He does. He could sprint for it, right? He yeah. got 40. He could, oh, no doubt about that. Active hands by Sato has been very solid in this game. Trying to go zone right here a little bit, but they've got to extend it and play the three-point shot, which has been the chief weapon for Temple in this game. Got a lot of back and forth today. 11 lead changes in a tie. I think this is a good move by Coach Mata. Extend the zone. That way they force the pass to the inside. The inside players not as productive as the outside guy. Collins, no. Rebound. Miles, nice leak out by Dolman. Can he run it down? Yes. Whoa, oh, oh, nicely nice. done. Oh. Couldn't finish it off. Rebound, Butler. Freshman showing some dexterity there. Five-point lead by Temple, approaching the final 30 seconds. And John Cheney wants a set play. Have a shot clock differential of about eight seconds. As we celebrate our 25 seasons of college basketball, time to flash back into the ESPN archives. What a comeback. I mean, there's comebacks and there's comebacks. Layup, he got fouled! No way Temple deserves to win this game, and yet they put you in that coma and come back with their defense and exactly come back with the steal for the tie. Got it! For the lead. Happy short turn. Temple wins. What a comeback! That was a familiar voice, Mr. Sims. Yes, sir. Working with Coach Phelps no! on December night a few years ago. Pepe Sanchez, one of the all-timers here at Temple. And John Cheney, you know, they're, they're pretty much the same script. Oh, yeah. Same way they play. They play the same way all of the time. Don't turn the ball over. Guards dominate the offense. They wait for Hawkins. Ran through a gauntlet of picks. Knocks down the three. David Hawkins, 17 points. Chalmers, can he get it back? He has it going in and out. Butler rebounds. Temple can get another score here. Get it to double digits. And Final they have seconds. the ball, Dave, to start the second half as well. Hawkins inside. Foul. And they get Chalmers stopping the clock with five seconds to go. Chalmers second. No shot right here. Only the fifth foul on Xavier. Hawkins undoubtedly is going to get it back. Here's Hawkins. Butler back to Hawkins. Lee Malone. Pump fake up in the air. No. And Temple will go to the break. Leading by eight. 39-31. Outstanding first half by David Hawkins. Hawkins the leading scorer. To the outs. And look at that. 11 changes in a tie in the first half. But Hawkins, 17 points in 20 minutes, 5 of 10 from three-point range. 
Six of 13 total from the field. But the Owls are remarkable. Nine out of Saving away. Misses. Easy rebound. Hawkins. Owls by 11. Imagine the largest lead. It will be interesting to see if some of the threes stop falling. What happens? As big as the Atlantic Ocean. Senior day here at Temple. Their lone senior smoking on North Front Street. Boy, that's a long, quiet ride back to Louisville. My goodness, as we check out the Hawkins family, his wife, Akila, Nico and Trinity's youngsters to the left, David Hawkins, having a fabulous, fabulous day. And we have 1720 to go here, Bob Wentzel. Look at that. 25 points already. That's how many Chris Fowler had in his career. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. And uh, that was Bob Wenzel. That's W-E-N. <laughs> What a day. Oh, my goodness. You know, he had to score 99 points to become the second guy in Temple history to surpass Lynn Greer. He might do it tonight. He's going. Here's Miles down low, effectively using the left hand. And I think that's where they need to go. I said it on the last possession. They are, cannot strictly shoot from the perimeter and think that they're going to win this game. They've got to chip back into the game by getting some baskets inside and outside. Miles with eight points. Temple on a 20-9 run, getting back into the first half. Collins controlling Temple, gives to Hawkins, goes inside. Doman got crushed, and Butler bangs one down. Well, they're taking a the heart away from Xavier now. 49-35. Think about this. Temple only shot two free throws in the first half, and they were so good from three-point range. I'll tell you what, they ought to just foul Temple on the next couple of possessions. <laughs> they obviously are not staying close enough. Wow. Remarkable, isn't it? Temple's 10th in the league in free throw shooting. Yeah, foul somebody. Yeah. You know, better than having these threes go down on you. And they're uh, almost uncontested. Miles drew a crowd. I think Coach Mott is thinking the way I'm thinking. Right now, they've gotten the ball to Miles three times in a row. Here's David Hawkins, the lone senior player. He said, John Cheney echoed the sentiments Eddie Jones and so many before him made me, help make me a man. A little tear in his eye, too, on the part of Hawkins. Very emotional before the game. John Cheney, one of his favorite players, talks about that with unabashed emotion when he speaks of David Hawkins. Michael Blackshear comes in to pick up Butler as well. Look at that. Moving up on the list with the bullet. Dick Clark used to work in this town. Moving up with a bullet. <laughs> 2,000 is a lot of points, man. Three guys have done it at this school in the storied history. And we're watching one of them today. Collins. Operating, firing, rebound, Sato. Xavier needs a life here. Down 13. Down low to little Miles again. They can't up, they can't stop him. Miles is the ticket right now. And they're riding him, 49-38. He's got 11 points. They should have been a lot doing a lot more of that early in the game. They fell in love with the three, and the three fell out of love with them. And how many times do you see that? A couple, three times a week, Coach? Oh, amen. I don't know if David Hawkins believes in any of that stuff. I think right now he, he has the proverbial green light. Fire. Look at the rebound by Robinson coming in from the weak side. Kept alive by Blackshear. Let's give him credit. If this was hockey, he'd get a point. Yeah, no doubt about that. He kept it alive. Blackshear is a solid, solid rebounder. Leaves them in rebounding. Only plays about 12 minutes a game. 51-38. The problem when you get behind on Temple is it takes a long time to get a good shot against their matchup. How about Blackshear? If you're scoring at home, put one on the hustle board for Mr. Blackshear, the sophomore from Simon Gratz. He keeps it alive. And Temple comes away with a... Last week on Dream Job, six more finalists face the heat. Whoa! Sometimes you gotta... However, it is contested. Dolman 6-9. Challenged that shot pretty well, but he was in his rhythm already. We had a double foul on that last one. Miles picked up his second. And uh, Nehemiah Ingram, his fourth. Well, usually when there's some scuffle, you're going to get both guys with the fouls. That's the fairest way to do it. 54-38. Got a new clock coming up. 
Xavier coming in off a win against GW, 83-66 earlier in the week. Temple double overtime, UMass, 98-92. Both teams come in having won eight of their last nine as they get ready for the A-10 tournament. Many folks believe it'll be a St. Joseph's coronation, but uh, both of these clubs may have a say in it next I week. I think Dayton will have a say today also, right? It's on their home floor, Dave. That's right. St. Joseph, the team of the year in the A-10, knocked off Temple twice by 12 and 23 points. As Sato gets one to go, it's a deuce. And St. Joseph, three in that game. How about a box and one on Hawkins? Maybe somebody shadow him the whole time. Play him man to man, a box zone with everyone else. Collins, tired. Ten on the shot clock. Hawkins gets it. Quick release. Back rim. No good. Bowman rebounds. Ingram's got to be careful playing with his fourth foul. Cage. He got hit from behind. A block by Byard, but I think they're going to get Hawkins for the foul down low. And uh, St. Joseph's, we talked about the Hawks. You start with this man, Jameer Nelson, undoubtedly the player of the year in the Atlantic 10. So difficult to stop. He's a great shooter, but four of the five three-point shooters in this league are on that team. He is the Barry Sanders of college basketball. You talk about a guy who can stop and go on a dime. That is Jameer Nelson, totally unselfish, a great scorer. What a player, the best ever at St. Joseph's. And with Carolyn Stakaitis starting to knock down threes on a consistent basis, you had those two with Delonte West and Jameer Nelson. You can see how difficult it is to play St. Joseph's. Don't Collins. leave out Tyrone Barley. That's He's right. in the league. Barley's done a heck of a job. Collins a little long, rebound cage. Xavier gonna show a little life. They're gonna try to get it done right here with Diedrich Finn running the show. Well, they got better outside shooting. Three guys who can make them right now, but they need to take it inside, which is what they've done. I really like what Xavier's done in the last four or five minutes. They haven't made an impact because of the defensive end. Here's a look at the A-10 standing. St. Joseph, uh, St. Joseph's unbeaten, finished their regular season the other day against Bonnie's. Temple locked up second place, and Xavier battling Richmond for third place. No doubt about that, and of course, Dayton will have a bye, as will Temple and St. Joseph's. Top two in each side get a bye in the Atlantic 10 tournament. That fourth one yet to be decided. GW and Richmond playing later. GW's a danger, could be a dangerous team. They've had their road difficulties, but they've been murdered down at the Smith Center in D.C. Only lost one game at the Smith Center against Richmond this season, but on the road, not as successful. Team one to come, young, aggressive. Oh, yeah, Carl Hoff doing a great job at that program. Just pressured by Xavier. Nice double teaming without a foul. That is the key ingredient. Throws Temple rhythm off a little bit, but you still got to find Hawkins. He's now running the baseline, trying to find the corner shots. Temple had a two touchdown lead in this game. It's down to 11. Collins, tough shot, didn't get ironed. Best defensive possession in a long time for the Musketeers on that one. Of course, the bad shot got the board. Hawkins didn't get a good look at all. Brandon Cole with Dolman, Sato, Finn, and Cage on the floor right now. Travel as Dolman took the extra step after the defense closed down on him. Well, Miles has been on the bench recently to try to get a little blow, but he needs to get back in the game quickly. He is their best offensive player in the paint and is doing a good job in the second half. Six turnovers for Xavier, three for Temple. This is designed to trap a half court right as you cross the 10 second line. Temple wary of that line. Do a good job of reversing the basketball. That's how you're supposed to do it. Watch Hawkins on the pick and pop right here. He's going to set a screen and pop. Pretty aware of him on this trip. They are. And that's what they need to be. Robinson line drive got fouled by Doman. Well, what happens to a defensive player Temple has made so many threes, you're conscious of challenging their shots, and sometimes you get too close right here. This is a two. Hits him on the elbow. And as a result, that shot pretty flat. First foul on Dolman. Since Antoine Robinson to the line, where he's a 61% shooter on the season. Sort of the forgotten guy on this team, 
Of the 24 games he's played, he started 23 of them. Solid, roll guy, reliable, blends in. Had nine points against UMass earlier in the week. 6'8", sophomore, Charlotte, North Carolina. To keep it alive. Butler playing big and then lost it as he brought it down. Boy, Butler, 7'1", 250, slowly but surely maturing into a force, playing the center spot for John Cheney's Temple Owls. That foul on that play, the first on Cole. Timeout here in Philadelphia. The Owls lead by a dozen. That's a big lead over Mississippi State. Any way you want to say thank you, these guys have found another way. Thank <laughs> David Hawkins for the outstanding career he's had here at Temple University. 55-43, the Temple lead here in the second half. A statistical aberration right here. The three-pointers for Temple, over 50% for the game. Xavier coming up empty in the second half. That's why Temple is ahead. The three-point shooting has been dramatic. Not only Hawkins, the other guys also. Stunning given that Temple's the worst three-point shooting team in the Atlantic 10. Hawkins showing some range back rim. No good Chalmers rebound. Thin left brace. Shot it short. Rebound fired an easy one. Well, Miles is back in the game, so they have an opportunity to go inside through the Musketeers. Ben decided to shoot early in transition. Two small guards. Notice the difference in the zone between Temple and Xavier. Temple's guard 6'5 and 6'6. Six, six. The Xavier guard 6'6 six foot and 6'. So as a result, they cannot cover as much territory. Serious length fired. Tough shot. Rebound. Butler brought the ball down again. Second time. He had his hands on the ball and lost it right at the basket. When you bring it down, you're just as small as everybody else. Seven foot means nothing. Boy, you could have said Thad Mata saying, hey, how come there's no foul on Butler riding down Doman? He got knocked down going down the lane, no call. This time of year, it gets more physical. Doman has a lot of skill, but right here, just a slight bump, and he goes down. You can see he's going to get stronger and stronger during his career, only a freshman. Top to Sato, but pretty quiet today. Hits that one. Sato with a two, and that gives him 13 on the day. Collins bringing it up. Here's a trap. Nice trap. Don't foul, but they did. Sato with the foul. It fans a full slate of NBA action comes your way tomorrow on ABC and ESPN. First beginning at 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. It'll be the Mavericks and the Houston Rockets, then followed by Jason Kidd and the Lakers. 55-45. Score here, fired. Rebound Sato. The reason Xavier back in the game, they're starting to miss some. Three ball, Chalmers. Inside of 10 points now, 55-48. Temple had a 14-point lead. Slowly but surely, they hung in. You have heard that phrase, you live by the three, you die by the three. Up and over the top, there's the three, and Xavier's going to get the ball right back. Right now, Temple is dying by the three. You mentioned they shoot the worst in the league and shooting over 50% in this game, but the last three possessions empty from the perimeter. In the corner, Sato. No, Miles rebound. Oh, that's a quick move. Blew the layup. Taken down by Robinson. Under 10 to play here in the second half. Temple had a 14-point lead. Hawkins got popped in the eye and calls a timeout. Doman inadvertently got him on the right eye. Well, you can see him going to his finger. He must wear contact lenses. He's got it on his finger, and he's going to put it back in his eye. Trainer over to help out a little bit. Right here, you said inadvertent, but look how the hand is up in his face. They got to do a lot more of that on him. And I talked before about fouling him earlier in a possession to get him out of his rhythm. Tempo missing threes now. Xavier making some. And that's why this is a seven-point lead instead of a 14-point lead. Sure enough, 28 points. Five boards for Hawkins. Xavier on a 10-1 run the last four and a half minutes. And you saw how key Hawkins is. 
able to stay in the game. He played all 50 minutes in their double overtime victory against UMass, as, is, as did Marty Collins. They absolutely positively have to have him. Fired way outside. Collins and Hawkins are number one and two scorers. Actually, Hawkins and Collins are never top two scorers. And Antoine Robinson showing some scoring life today. Antoine shot it confidently. And he's got seven points, 57-48. Well above his average of four. Now Robinson playing the front of the zone at 6-8. Temple's starting to look like they've turned up their defense at now. But you know when it's extended, it's Here available it inside. Trailer. Oh, that had a chance. Good job by Collins to get that up on, from, up on the rim. He had a trailer in Hawkins. Second foul on Dolman's pretty strong, taking it to the basket. Dolman did a good job fouling him. You don't want to give a layup in that situation. But when Temple extends this way, and John Cheney gets his guys jumping out in the passing lanes and pressuring the ball, Miles will be available. There are a lot more seams available when you extend your zone like that. And the reason he's extending it, Xavier made three threes in the last few minutes. So an adjustment by the part of the Hall of Famer. That model with John Gross. Eight points for Collins, looking for his 16th consecutive double-figure game. Glad you could join us for NCAA basketball. Xavier Temple in the Atlantic 10, along with Bob Wendell and Dave Sims. Philadelphia-based ESPN crew. Here's your three-point numbers. Temple having a festival of threes as Butler and Bob. What do we got? Gonna go on Butler, his second. Strong move by Dolman to take the ball to the basket. Xavier has displayed some balance in their offense that they did not have earlier, and as a result, they're back in the game. Dolman on the day with 12 points. First point here in the second half. Dolman out of Union, Kentucky. 65% free throw shooter. Eight points to lead for Temple. Pressure now being extended full court by Xavier. This is not the man-to-man -man variety. Last time they trapped at half court and fouled. This time they do not foul. Back into zone. Quarter, quarter. Robinson shot it short. Butler rebound. Back to Robinson. Tough shot. He'll shoot two. Miles picks up the foul. For Miles, his third. Miles felt as if he went straight up in the air on that. That is a frustrating play for a post guy. Right here, scramble for the ball. Robinson gets it. Watch Miles do his hands go straight up. Pretty straight, I think. Say so got him with the body underneath. Robinson at the line. Makes that one. He's got eight. Temple playing very confidently for a 15 and 11 team. Of course, they are at home where they play much better than they do on the road, although a team that travels a great deal and plays tough schedules year in and year out. Temple 5-2 Temple and two at home this year, and when we come back, a lot to be proud of from Xavier. Welcome back, everybody. Xavier trying to catch up to the Temple Owls. Down by 10 as you look at action on the Schuylkill River here in Philadelphia. 755 to go. And a rematch tonight. Carolina, Duke. We've got it for you on ESPN. 9 p.m. Eastern time. Should be one fabulous setting down at Cameron Indoor Stadium. They've been camping out at Shashevskyville the last few days. Last six wins over top 25 RPI teams, most in the nation. Well, Carolina has a, had a great year, Roy Williams. They are not a deep team, but extremely talented oh, yeah. through the first six. Their offense is great. Their defense has been porous at times. The emotions will be off the scale tonight. Second half scoring. Sato's got six here in the second half. Bowman's got two. Miles has seven of his 11 here in the second half. Finn to Miles. Hesitated for a moment. Nice patience. Dolman gets a free look. 
What a great possession. Are you kidding me? What a great possession by Xavier. Great patience by all guys involved, playing at a high level. 16 for Doman. Temple had a 14-point lead. Xavier's been very steady, very calm in attacking Temple. Temple has back missed. making this a game. Temple has missed their last four three-point shots, including that one. They had relied on it early. That's what got them the big lead. They're now 12 of 27. That can get ugly, and it cracks in the defense. Score the goal to Miles. He got fouled by Butler. And maybe, Miles has 13 points, nine here in the second half. Maybe three-point play the old way right here. A bullet pass by Dolman with good vision. Butler just pulls him down. Miles really fortunate to get that ball to the basket. Showed great skill. And now he's got an opportunity to close the gap even more. However, only a 48% free throw shooter. Big second half, not so good in the first half. A lot of poise by the Xavier ball club. In and out, Butler had it, they battle for it. Who's gonna come away? Timeout called by Temple's Butler won that battle. Well, he did a good job because the possession arrow was in favor of Xavier on that team on that particular spot. So after picking up his third foul, Butler gets possession for Temple. Xavier really can hang its hat on an outstanding graduation rate since 1986. Remains saddle. Look what he's done. Then you have Miles, list academics, as the reason for coming to Xavier. And then Compton, who rides at the back of the bench. Tom Compton out of Cincinnati St. Xavier High School. Then you have Lionel Chalmers. Ernie has his degree, receiving a master's in counseling. And this was last year when he got his bachelor's degree at graduation in Cincinnati. I think there's good teamwork in this also because Compton has a finance major and Sato is going to be making a lot of money in the NBA. So maybe he can invest his dollars wisely. Good teamwork on the graduation. Mr. Sato said he would ultimately, ultimately like to teach. How about that? 100% of their guys have graduated since 1986 who have finished their four years at Xavier. Very, very impressive. And that's something that 61 players, and they can put that on the banner and fly it high and proudly at Xavier. Amen. Under six and a half to go here in regulation. Nine and three run by Xavier of the last two and a half. And another miss by Temple. You wonder if Temple's getting tired in the legs from the outside shooting. Wide open three. It's a big one. No. Rebound. Put back. It's good by Sato. As we approach six minutes to go, it's a three-point game. Oh, my goodness. A lot of time left. Time for Temple to get hot again, but they have been cold now for the last five minutes. You know, it's, when you're up 14, it looked like Temple put this game in its hip pocket and did not play with the sense of urgency that built that 14-point lead. Lead hence their, their trouble right now, leading only by three. Great job by Xavier. Pull up Collins in and out. Oh, man! And a foul on the play. It's on Miles. Romain Sato shoots the ball from the perimeter, but he has hops that you can't believe. And on this miss, he shows why he is an All-American. They have come alive, and the leader of the band is Romain Sato. Gets the energy flowing. Temple is living and dying with the three-point shot. They need to get some more balance to their offense on the inside in the last five and a half minutes. Last foul is on Sato, his third. Butler converts at the free throw line. Butler, reasonably decent free throw shooter at 64%. Doesn't get there a lot, just doesn't does. get a lot of touches, but nice rotation on his part. Not an offensive guy, he's got four points. Well, this is the way you would expect a game, last game of the regular season for these two to be. Intensely played, a lot of different things going on in the game. Chalmers. Three points, he's got it! 62-60. Chalmers knew he had that one. That was at the hash mark, for crying out loud. He's got eight. Couple threes to his credit. We approach five minutes to go. Last time these clubs met in the semifinals of the E-10 tournament last year. Robinson baseline jump right now. Oh, good. Here's Xavier with a chance to tire, take the lead on this possession. Nothing going down right now for the Owls. Fatigue in the legs. 
within. Temple 0 for its last nine from the field. Doman, baseline, he got fouled. And Butler picks up foul number four. Dolman has the ability not just to shoot threes, which he demonstrated early in this game, but also the ability at 6'9 to put the ball on the floor. Not strong enough to finish yet in his career, but has the moves. Dolman looking for point number seven, can't get it. He got held before he had the contact from Butler. Robinson will take a seat. Salisbury's in, Blackshear's gonna come in and pick up. Butler, so Temple gets a slight bit, gets, gets smaller here. As uh, Robinson, six foot eight, and Butler at seven one. Well, they could go maybe man to man right here. Bowman, 17th point, misses both. Boy, mark that down, 443. He missed a deuce. Well, we got a lot of basketball to play. This one's going to go to the wire, there's no doubt about that. I expect Temple may go man to man on the next possession. We'll see. Temple's so over its last nine from the field, under four and a half to play, clinging to a two-point lead. It was once 14 points. 49-35. Hawkins, no rebound. Miles. Boy, it's been sun may have set since the last time he hit one. Oh, he didn't get away with an extra challenge. Steps into another one. Savior taking a lead at 63-62. Lionel Chalmers, the senior, racking up another one. He's got 11. He's hit his last two threes. Well, they have found him very, very well the last three possessions. He has stepped up big time, has made 20 in six of the last nine games. They've won eight of those. Very impressive the way Chalmers has caught the ball in rhythm twice from around the hash mark. Right in front of the Xavier bench. Collins with seven shot clock. Fading, got it. He hadn't hit in a long time either. Well, that's the one they need. Remember in the first half, Collins got a lot of shots using his height advantage at 6'6", getting into the paint. They need some balance, and he has brought it. Uh, Collins with 10. We'll take a break. The rhythmic shooting of Lionel Chalmers stepping up large. Xavier trailing by a point. Excuse me, how much? Very important game, Chris, no question about it, as is this one. Xavier trailing by a point after having been down 14. They've made a terrific comeback here. Loose ball, knocked out of bounds by Temple. Coming out of the timeout, Temple extending their defense, really pressure in the basketball. Look for Xavier to make a dribble penetration or pass penetration. That would be the proper response right now to the aggression. Finn and Chalmers, two point guards in the game at the same time. Both of them can get the shot up, get Sato in the corner. Dolman and Miles on the floor, right now for Xavier. Shot by Gallon, they get a nice feed in there. Sato, what a look by Chalmers. Well, they did the proper response to the extended defense. Chalmers, great vision. Sato with 17, 14th lead change. They have come from deep down to get in this point. Hawkins has been absent, missing in action offensively for a long time. Hawkins in a scramble, turned it over. And here comes Xavier. They've got numbers five on four. Chalmers split the defense and then got fouled. He's going to shoot too. On his way up. What a drastic turn of events. Lionel Chalmers has been fabulous in the second half. Only two points in the first half. Got into his rhythm from the same spot with the threes. And his teammates found him, and he found his teammates. What a balanced play by Chalmers in the second half. Chalmers can't get the first one again. Robinson and Butler are going to come back in for Salisbury and Blackshear. If Xavier loses this game, they're going to decry their four free throw shooting. Dolman missed two a minute ago. Chalmers misses one here. Yeah, they're not having a good day. That's an understatement. Nine out of 19 from the line. That is not how you do it. How about Hawkins? 0 for his last seven. Big part of the reason why the Temple House trail by one as we approach two minutes to go in regulation. Hawkins down low, slips, goes inside, puts a foul on somebody, take the pick. 
You like his response? He's not getting threes, so what does he do? Slides into the middle of the zone and becomes a post player at 6'5 and 230. Versatile enough to play outside and in. Hawkins trying to will his team to victory in this one. See Doman picked up his third. John Cheney. This is what you come to North Carolina for. You dream of a matchup against those guys from Bureau of North Carolina. There is just something magical about this rivalry. Anytime those clubs get together, you have the date circled on your calendar. You cleared a couple hours before and a couple hours after. The rematch tonight. Number 16, Carolina gets number three, Duke. Quintessential American rivalry on the college basketball landscape. Outstanding. Uh, it's, it's so much fun to be a part of that. I was a part of it for six years. Hawkins with 28 points, and he's been on that number for a long time. But the Duke-Carolina rivalry ingrained in the culture there, and of course ingrained in the national culture yes, because sir. of the coverage of ESPN over the years, bringing that game to everyone. Hawkins hasn't scored since the 1432 mark. That's a long time ago. That was his last field goal. That free throw gave him 29. He was on pace. We were thinking 5-0. <laughs> That's right. And we're not talking about the Philadelphia de de Police Department either. There is weak free throw shooting by Xavier and average free throw shooting by the Owls. In and out for Hawkins. One out of two. 65 all. 29 for Hawkins. Too high. Down low. Sato. Outside, rather. Look for Chalmers to dribble penetrate when the white shirts extend their deep. Ben stops his dribble. They go down to Miles. Turn around. No rebound swept down by Marty Collins. Temple's got the ball and the clock on its favor. 14 lead changes and two ties. But a good game. It's minute one. Collins thought about it. Collins wants to get to the paint with the dribble and shoot over people. Hawkins wants to flash into the lane. Keep Butler on the block for offensive rebounding. Notice Collins in the middle of the lane trying to get the ball there. 18 fouls on Xavier, nine Temple. Big one, no rebound. A huge one for Romain Sato in a 65 all game. That doesn't surprise me. Sato, big time rebounder. Timeout, X-Men. Xavier kept grinding and grinding. Didn't lose its poise. Hung in the game. And Hawkins got Temple to a point where this looked like it was going to be a lap for a 14-point margin. Well, there was a lot of iron in that one. It was a magical first 30 minutes for Hawkins. He was fabulous. He's got 28. He hadn't cooled off from his 41 per point performance against UMass, but he has been cooled in the last 10 minutes. And, of course, those are his numbers today. Fabulous 8 of 16 from three-point range. But he's trying to find it inside right now. They have lived and died by the three in this game. And that man's team, as you mentioned, kept poised throughout. Senior dominated with Chalmers and Sato and Miles leading the way for the Musketeers. Xavier trying to secure a place as the third place team in the West. Down low, Miles to get a dunk. Great call by Thad Mott and his staff. Xavier by two. Under a minute to play. Well, I talked about the penetration ability of Chalmers, and he is doing it in end game situation. Keep in mind, they are 18 and 10, 19 and 10. They would really be in a good shape for the NCAAs with one more victory. Miles has 15. Most of it second half. Hawkins got hit, tip, no. Butler knocked it. I thought Butler knocked that out of bounds. No doubt about that. There's going to be a summit meeting between the officials right here. Conley and David Elliott. Fran had a better look. He had the same vantage point we did. And you can clearly see that Butler knocked it out of bounds. There's no doubt about this call. He hits it twice right here. Goes out of bounds. The right call made, and 99% of the time it is made accurately. That was a good call. 67, 65, 35.4 seconds to go. This has been a crushing loss for Temple. Cruising into the tournament, both teams have won eight of their last nine. Don't forget to stay with us. Texas trying to rebound from their Monday loss to Oklahoma State. Takes on Kansas State. 
And a tip off coming up at 5.05 Eastern Time. Xavier by two with the ball. Dave, this game much more vital for Xavier than it is for Temple. The reason they are on the bubble. A big win here can get them there. Look at their schedule strength. 66, that's not great. But key wins over Cincinnati and Alabama, both of whom will be in the tournament. The two Duquesne losses are a problem. Four and four against the top 50 teams. Squarely on the bubble. This game much more important to them. Temple is not on the bubble. Temple must win the Atlantic 10 tournament to get their bid. So a different kind of mindset for these teams in this game, but it has resulted in intensity on both teams' part. Temple, the worst three-point shooting team in the league, had a festival today. A lot of physicality down low, they let them play, and then finally a foul stops the clock with 31-2 to go. But Temple lived by the three, and then uh, the three said, okay, if Tuesday enough, I'm out of here, and uh, and they've been in trouble the last eight to 10 minutes after leaving, uh, leading by 14 points. Well, this part of the game has been trouble for Xavier in this game. They have not shot well from the free throw line. The only guy who's an excellent free throw shooter is Romain Sato. Diedrich Fins, 66%, but he is a tough individual. Finn got the first one. They're a miserable 11 of 26. Well, that, that is far. That's as bad as you can get for a team. But they're not a great free throw shooting team. Most of the guys in the 60s, and of course, Anthony Miles at 48. Well, they're seventh in the league coming in. For the four point lead, no rebound goes to Robinson. Temple down a triple as we are 25 seconds ago. John Cheney wants a timeout. Well, his inside's got to be killing him right now. They had a 14-point lead. It all but put the lock on this game. And next thing you know, here's Xavier leading by three with an outstanding comeback. Texas and K-State, Big 12 action. Coming up after our game, 5.05 Eastern time. When you rely on time. one player like they rely on David Hawkins, when he goes cold or doesn't get some shots, things can change dramatically. And that's been the story of the season for Temple. When he is hot and he's going great and everything's going wonderful, they can beat the best of teams. But when he is not, certainly a barometer kind of player. And for this team, this game, he has been the barometer. When he was going great, way ahead. There's the timeout situation. Xavier with one left, Temple with one left. And the possession hour, importantly, in favor of the X-Men. David Hawkins being honored. They have initial stenciled on the Sox for today's senior day here at Temple. That 14-point lead, they topped out at that number with 16.30 to go in the second half. But it was more than even the 14 points, Dave. They were totally in control. Oh, yeah, no Everything was going down. Everything was going right. Xavier couldn't find a shot, and Xavier started going inside, got themselves better there, and that's when they started making their shots from the perimeter. Chalmers was absolutely great, and the All-American Sato showing his part on the boards. Here's uh, Xavier coming out a little bit smaller here to go against this Temple attack. Could be the final possession of the game. Three points, the margin. Collins dribbling some clock down. Hawkins with 17. Shot clock off. Hawkins, quick, pull up, tough shot. He got hit. Oh, and he missed it. So he'll shoot two. He was hoping to get a three-point opportunity. They were going to guard him tightly on the three-point line. He had to put it down. Watch his strength. Goes up right here. Not much of a foul, really. Got hit on the elbow at the start of the shot. Hawkins, a good free throw shooter at 76%. Cage to Fowler, his second. Three-point differential right here. Even if he makes these two, they got to get in position to steal or foul immediately. That gives Hawkins 30. He's a 76% free throw shooter on the season for the day. Two out of four. Wife, mom watching on here. 11.5, his final home game. That was clear. Second free throw is good. 11.5 to go to one point game. Dolman's going to come in. Well, Dolman comes in for Cage because at 6'9", he's a pretty good ball handler. Has not shot free throws well in this game. Dilemma for Xavier. Who do you inbound to? Sato would be the best guy. Finn pretty tough. Sato's the best free throw shooter. And he's fouled immediately before it is even thrown in bounds. Hired had his hand in his jersey. There was no way he was going to get free without getting fouled. That is good news for Xavier, Dave. Sato, 82% from the line. 
Sanchez. Sato is fourth in the Atlantic 10 in free throw shooting. And this is a clutch time for him. 11.5 to go. And a one-point lead. He's three of four on the afternoon. Got the first. Nice that rotation, modest club, huh? That modest club has a two-point lead over John Cheney's Temple Owls. Sato for the second one. He's got 19 and the lead at three. Timeout Xavier. What a comeback by the Xavier Musketeers. They want to be a force in the A-10 tournament next week. St. Joe's the, the team of the year in the A-10. Team of the year nationally yes, as sir. well. Only undefeated team besides Stanford in the country going into their tournament. Give me your thoughts. Dayton, GW, Richmond, the way they're playing now, what we've seen here out of Xavier. Uh, I think if there's going to be a challenge against St. Joe's, do you think it'll be from that group? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, Richmond is a team that can beat anybody. They are a great defensive team. They slow the ball down. Dobbins is the best defender in the, in the league. Scrocky is a great shooter. And, the, and Jerry Wainwright's done a great job with that team. Rhode Island could be a spoiler. They almost beat St. Joe's right, last week. Had them at Rhode Island. Of course, Dayton has the advantage because the game is being played on their floor. It will be a sellout, I'm sure. Temple playing well right now. Xavier, I'm, I'm telling you, this is going to be rocking and rolling. How big has Romain Sato been? 12 points here in the second half. He's got 19 for the game. He shot 6 for 10, 12 boards, and 6 assists. Well, he's the All-American candidate on this team, and he doesn't do it with the ball, so sometimes he's not as noticeable as some other players. Only player active in the NCAA who has 1,800 points, 800 rebounds, and 200 assists. Isn't that amazing? That speaks to the versatility of that young man. Five years ago, did not even speak English. Coming off a 16-point performance against George Washington Temple. Game on the line here, 11-5 to go. They get it to Collins. Clock winding down. They need a triple to tie. Collins with six, with five. Is he going to get a shot off? They exchange with Hawkins for three. It's up in the air, short. Put up the rebound, but Xavier comes away with the win. They were down 14 here at Philadelphia and come away with a 70 to 69 victory. Xavier goes to 19 and 10, 10 and 6 in the Atlantic 10. Temple goes to 15 and 12, 9 and 7. For Bob Wenzel and our entire crew, I'm Dave Sims, 70 to 67 Xavier. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Right now, let's send it back to the studio and Chris Fowler. Dave and Bob, thank you. Big win for Xavier. Up next, Jared Hart, a senior at KSA, will try to go out in style by upsetting Texas, which has clinched the number two seed in the Big 12 tournament. It's tip off at 5.05. Clinching NCA bids today out of the Big South Liberty on their home floor, a convincing winner. And in the Southern Conference, East Tennessee State at 27 and 5. They've stood toe to toe with some big boys this season. Of course, they almost upset Wake Forest last year in the first round. So a pretty good seed, high RPI. In progress now on ESPN2, Central Florida has led Troy State throughout. It's a battle of the top two seeds in the Atlantic Sun for that automatic bid. And up next on ESPN2, Murray State and Austin P. two teams with good tradition. Battle for the Ohio Valley Conference automatic bid. Now, Austin P. undefeated 16-0 in the regular season in the OVC. Two close games to get to this championship game. Beat Murray State in their only meeting so far. But hang in, that should be a very interesting game over in ESPN2 for the OVC automatic bid. Meanwhile, Louisville and Marquette in Conference USA. Marquette from the Final Four to 8-8 eight eight in Conference USA right now. But they do have momentum going into the Conference Tournament. A foul on a late shot. And Damian Mason hits the free throw, completes three-point play. And Louisville loses in a heartbreaker. A reminder, at 9 o'clock Eastern time tonight, the latest... In the greatest rivalry in college basketball, the Tar Heels and the Blue Devils, the Texas K-State's coming.